Let's go over another redox reaction past paper question together. Starting with 8.1, a solution of nickel to nitrate. So how does that look? Well, we know that they're telling me that the charge of nickel in I is plus two, and we know that nitrate in O3 has a charge of negative one, which means I would have to multiply this by two. So it is Ni and then NO3, okay? They don't give it to you, it's probably not relevant, but it's always good to know what this is if they were to say give the chemical formula. It's placed in a zinc container. It was observed after some time that a chemical reaction had taken place and they give me the net ionic equation. First of all, explain the term redox reaction. Here's our answer. A redox reaction is a reaction that involves an electron transfer. Just for a quick recap, remember it's oil rig. Oxidation is loss of electrons. Reduction is gain of electrons. So we're transferring electrons. Which one? of Zn or Ni plus is the oxidizing agent. Explain the answer by referring to oxidation numbers. So I was going to say that there's a few ways for us to figure this out, but the easiest is to use oxidation numbers and they want us to use oxidation numbers. So let's do that. As you should be able to recall from my previous videos, when we assign oxidation numbers and our element is standing all by itself, even if it's diatomic, it is an oxidation number of zero. So Zn would be zero and Ni, nickel, would be zero, the oxidation number. And then if we have a charged element, like here, an iron, the oxidation number is equivalent to the charge. So plus two for the nickel iron and plus two as well for the zinc iron. Then what we would do is we would look at zinc on the left-hand side compared to zinc on the right-hand side. What happened to the oxidation number? It went from zero to plus two. So for zinc, the oxidation number increased. That means that zinc is oxidized. There's been an increase in oxidation number from zero to plus two. And then in the same way, if we compare nickel, nickel over here, nickel over here, you can see that to go from two to zero, there must be a decrease in oxidation number. And that means that Ni2+, the nickel iron, Ni2+, has been reduced because there's a decrease in oxidation number. So our question asked, which one is the oxidizing agent? Remember, if you are reduced, you are the oxidizing agent. So the answer is Ni2+. Zn has been oxidized, so it's the reducing agent. So who's the oxidizing agent? Ni2+, explained by referring to oxidation numbers. So we would say the oxidation number decreased from plus two to zero, just like that. Then 8.1.3, give a reason why the nitrate iron, remember we spoke about the solution of nickel nitrate and we spoke about the nitrate iron, NO3 with a charge of negative one, as mentioned over here. They say it's not written in the net ionic equation above. Why does it not feature here? The reason why is because the nitrate iron is what we call a spectator iron. And that means that the nitrate iron is neither oxidized nor is it reduced. It undergoes no change in its oxidation state, spectator iron. 8.2 says the reaction between dichromate ions and tin ions is in an acid medium. It's given below. Determine the oxidation number of Cr and Cr2, O7, 2 minus. Now, I've done this exact question in my previous redox video. So please go watch that video if you want to see how I did this. I'll link it down in the description box below. It's a copy paste of that exact question. So go check it out over there. Then they say write down the reduction half reaction. Here's my equation. In order to figure out what the reduction half reaction is, I first need to identify what is the oxidation half reaction, what is the reduction half reaction, and I need to do that by looking at what I have in this formula over here. Now, by how do I do this? I need to pair things up in the formula. So the quickest thing that I see if I look at this is that Sn2+, plus, I'm going to highlight that, that looks like it becomes Sn4+. Plus. Those substances, looks, they look like I can link them together. We're going to confirm by checking the table to see if I'm correct or incorrect. The other two that look like I can pair them up is cr 2072 minus and cr 3 plus. They've both got chromium in them and I've actually used these two in a previous video in the half reaction before. I know exactly what half reaction that is on the table. I know I've got H pluses and H2Os over here. My guess is that they're going to feature in this half reaction but this is where we need to go look at our table 4B. So if we take a look at table 4B 
as you can see here, table 4B, standard reductions potential, and we look for the two reactions that I've highlighted from what was given. Remember, we're looking for one reaction that has SN2 plus on one side and SN4 plus on the other side. Not necessarily that one on the left and that one on the right, but one on either side of the arrow. And then CR2072 minus on the one side and CR207, CR3 plus, sorry, on the other side. Okay, so we're looking for those pairs. So I see the first pair over here. There's SN2 plus and SN4 plus, a reaction with those on either side. And if you keep looking on your table, keep scrolling down, you will find the other half reaction that we were speaking about. CR2072 minus on the one side and CR3 plus on the other side. So we found both of our half reactions. Then as we've discussed in previous videos, there's the two, the reaction that sits on top the one that is higher up on the table, because of the arrow in our table 4B, increasing strength of reducing agents. Remember, this is if you use table 4B. So because of the arrow, the arrow points up and it says increasing strength of reducing agents. So if you're higher up on the table, so this half reaction, then you are a stronger reducing agent. So this is a stronger reducing agent than this. That means that this is going to be oxidized. Remember, if you are a stronger reducing agent, you are oxidized. If that's too confusing for you to understand, what you can simply learn is you look for the two half reactions, the one that sits on the top, the first reaction that you come across when you read top to bottom. So this one, the one on the top, that is your oxidation half reaction. And how do we read oxidation? Always from right to left, as discussed in previous videos. So... My question wanted me to find the reduction half reaction. So basically, it's not, it's not the one that I just found. The next one would be my reduction half reaction. The one that's lower down. This one. This is my reduction half reaction. And we always write that down from left to right. So we write it down as it appears on the page. CR2O7 to minus plus 14 H plus plus 6 E minus. Just a single arrow pointing to the right, not a double arrow. 2CR3 plus plus 7H2O. My next question wants the balanced net ionic equation using the table. So, like I said, when using the table, we need to identify the half reactions. So, I've already identified the reduction half reaction and I've written it out. Go back to the table. So, the one lower down. That was my reduction half reaction, this one, which I already wrote down. Then we scroll up. The first reaction that we come across, so the one that I've circled over here, is my oxidation half reaction. And I write it down backwards. So in other words, we write down the SN2 plus first, SN2 plus. Then we draw an arrow. And then we write down SN4 plus, plus 2E minus. Also, if you get confused with regards to which way to write down these half reactions, so do I write them down backwards or do I write them down normally from left to right? Look at the original question. The original question had the 2 plus on the left and the 4 plus on the right. So when I write it down, the 2 plus must be on the left and the 4 plus must be on the right, just like it says over here. You can't write it down like it says on the table with the 4 plus on the left and the 2 plus on the right because that's backwards. I hope that makes sense. Now, my next step before I write down the balanced net ionic equation is I need to balance the electrons. So in this equation, I've got two electrons and yeah, I've got six. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to multiply this by three. I'm also going to have to multiply this by three and this by three. The reason why is because I need to make this number here a six. But what I do to the one thing I have to do to all the other things. So this is going to become three SN2 plus. 3SN4 plus and 6E minus. So now I'm not looking at the original anymore. Now what I do is I can cancel the electrons. You see how I keep the arrows lined up with each other. This is just helpful so I can see what needs to be on the left hand side and what needs to be on the right hand side. So I've canceled the electrons, we've balanced it. Then everything on the left hand side, you rewrite on the left hand side. And everything on the right hand side, you rewrite on the right hand side. There we go. I hope you found that helpful. I can't wait to see you in another video very soon. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Bye, everybody.